It's good to have you once again on Crunch Econometrics. Today we are looking at ARDL and three ways of checking for causality in EVUs. So what exactly is causality? I will answer that by saying that depending on your field or discipline, a statement such as X causes Y can be given any of the following meaning. You can say X leads to Y or X is the only cause of Y. You can also say that X is only one of the possible causes of Y. X must always lead to Y, that is, X determines Y. The occurrence of X makes the occurrence of Y more probable. X is a probabilistic cause of Y. X must occur either before or simultaneously with Y, but not afterwards. It can also mean that the past values of X forecast future values of Y. Regression analysis deals with the dependence of one variable on other variables, but that does not necessarily imply causation. In other words, the existence of a relationship between variables does not prove causality or the direction of influence. However, in regressions involving time series analysis, the situation is somehow different. Let's consider causality in time series analysis. A statistical relationship in itself cannot logically imply causation, but you can imply causation by putting that relationship to empirical testing. To ascribe causality, one must appeal to a priori expectations or theoretical considerations. In regression modeling, the underlying theory will indicate the direction of causality between the two variables, in this case y and x, which in the context of a single equation model is generally from x to y, x being the independent variable and y the outcome variable. You should also know that the future cannot predict the past. It is the opposite. It is the future value of y that is being predicted by the past values of x. In ARDL modeling, some conditions must be in place. The series must be stationary. The model is sensitive to the number of lags used. The error terms in the model must be serially uncorrelated. If you are now talking about some long-run relationship, then there must be evidence of cointegration. Although cointegration indicates the presence of Granger causality in at least one direction, it does not indicate the direction of causality between the variables. Among other factors, the direction of causality in this case can be detected through the error correction model derived from the long-run cointegrating vectors. So know that points number 4, 5, 6 relates to the error correction mechanism. So if that is not your focus, you are only concerned with points number 1, 2, 3. So point number 4, 5, 6 is just given to you by way of information. On the screen is a three-variable ARDL model. Domestic credit growth, real interest rate, and the log of investment. And from the model specification, you can clearly see that the dependent variable is a function of its own lag and the function of the level and the lags of the explanatory variables. Also know that the dependent variable takes the p lags, while the independent variables take the q lags. And as noted here, the lag length for pq may not necessarily be the same, unlike a var model where every variable in the model takes the same number of lags. It's not the same with ARDL. So the variables in an ARDL model may not necessarily have the same number of lags. So let's consider types of causality. We have short-run causal effects. And you can always know that from the F statistics and the T statistics of the regressors. We also look at long-run causal effects you can know that through the T statistics of the error correction term, this is applicable only to the error correction model. We also talk about joint causal effects. You can know that through the combination of the F statistics, 
the t statistics of the independent variables and the t statistics of the error correction term. Again, this is applicable to the error correction model. Other types of causality, you are not talking about unidirectional causality. This occurs from x to y. If the set of estimated coefficients of the lagged x are significantly different from zero, and the set of estimated coefficients of lagged y are not significantly different from zero. So I'm going to explain this using the model I showed you earlier on. Now, for you to get a better understanding of unidirectional or bidirectional or independent causality, this is what it means. To so explain the unidirectional causality from this model, I have the domestic credit growth equation here. If after estimating this equation, the coefficient of the real interest rate here is significantly different from zero, meaning it is not equal to zero. Then, after estimating the real exchange rate equation here, and then we find that the coefficient of domestic credit growth here is equal to zero, then we say there is a unidirectional causality from real interest rate to domestic credit growth. Because after estimating the two equations, the coefficient of real interest rate is significant in the domestic credit growth model, while the coefficient of the domestic credit growth uh, variable is not significant in the real interest rate model. So there is a unidirectional causality from real interest rate to domestic credit growth. Now, using the same analogy to explain bidirectional, after estimating the two equations, and you observe that the coefficient of real interest rate is statistically significant in the domestic credit growth equation and then the coefficient of domestic credit growth here is also significant in the real interest rate equation then you can infer bidirectional causality between the two variables but if after estimating the two equations you observe that the coefficient of real interest rate is not significant and also here, the coefficient of domestic credit growth is not significant. Then you can also infer that both variables exhibit independent causality, zero causality in the simplest form of explanation. So when you're talking about causality and you want to use the two statistics of the regressors to infer causality, just observe the statistical relevance of their coefficients. So that being said, I've used the model now to explain unidirectional, bidirectional, and independence causality. Three ways by which causality can be detected in an ARDL model. The first way is from the regressor's T statistics. If they are statistically significant, then causality can be inferred. The second way is by using the world coefficient test. The null hypothesis simply says that the coefficients of these regressors are equal to zero against the alternative that they are not equal to zero. And what would be your decision criteria? You reject the null hypothesis if the probability value of the F statistics is lower than 0 0.05. The third approach is by using the pairwise Granger causality test, which gives the direction of causality. The null hypothesis in this case is that there is no Granger causality against the alternative that the null is not true. Decision criteria reject the null if the probability value of the F statistics is lower than 0.05. Now, how do you go about this in EVUs? Step by step procedure. Number one, specify your model correctly. I've just shown you an example. Number two, perform stationarity test. The only reason why we keep testing for stationarity in ARDL model is that we just want to be sure that none of these variables are integrated of order two. Otherwise, there is no reason to test for stationarity. Also, determine the optimal lag length. Don't just arbitrarily use lags in the ARDL model. Get your optimal lags from any of the information criterion. Now go ahead to estimate the ARDL model. Perform causality tests using any of the approaches I explained earlier on. Then for our results to be taken with seriousness, we need to perform some diagnostics. So in conclusion, I would say that T statistics of the explanatory variables can always indicate short-run causal effects. 
in addition to the F statistics from either the Granger or the World Test, they also indicate short-run causal effects. Please take this away from this video that each of these causality tests or checks can serve as robustness or evidence of validation for one another. If you need further referencing on how to know more about causality checks, please read up these references I'm showing you on the screen. Thank you for watching. Support my channel for 1,000 subscribers. If you have not subscribed, click on the playlist below. I have lots of interesting videos on eViews application. Don't go away. Stay with me in my next videos. I'm going to show you how you can actually run these estimations in eViews.